some dirt, some actual proper just soil. Welcome to my Saturday bike ride. Just gonna take the camera, go to Wales. Three hours on the cards today. Sun's come out, it's 12 degrees. Wind's gentle from the north. Got the camera on super view. Now you know everything. I watched Abdullah's uh, part two of his 24 hour TT world record attempt. It was unfortunate, things didn't go quite to plan. But it was an absolutely monumental effort. Recommend watching the video. I've done two 24 hour races in the past and I know that it hurts a lot. My word, it hurts. So uh, I get the feeling that guy's able to push himself very hard. And he looked like he was dying on the bike. He essentially took himself to the point where he couldn't pedal anymore. I guess when you're going for a world record, you've got an average speed to hit. And uh, he must have known that he wasn't quite hitting it. He still carried on anyway. 600k in 24 hours. It's pretty legit. Hey, rider. Sorry, 600k is what he got to in 17 hours. Now that's fast. So for a special spiritual connection with the tremendous effort made, I'm today wearing the, what was it? Endura? Endura anonymous white jersey. Big up Abdullah, it's raining over there. Going across the bridge. But over there in like Lydney or wherever that is, it appears to be raining somewhat. I'm actually gonna check the forecast. If it is raining over there, I'm gonna go back because I'm a wuss. So it's eerily calm around here. I've just checked the precipitation situation on the Met Office and it says it's legit. It says there's no rain. But to me, I don't know. I don't agree. I'm gonna crack on anyway. If I get wet, I get wet. It bloody rained, didn't it? In a shelter. So I went on a proper mission the other evening. Basically, I got these sunflowers and some camellia and I've popped them out in pots, put the seeds in, they sorted themselves out and anyway, they need putting in bigger ones. So I got some bigger pots, needed some compost. So anyway, I wanted to avoid a car journey because I like to avoid car journeys if I can. And I thought, can you transport 35 liters of John Inns number one on a bike? So tried it. I thought, what bike's gonna be good for this? The Track Attack? I got multiple bikes, you see. So I was deciding which one is the primary compost transporter. So track attack, no, not really. Unless I put it in a massive rucksack on my back. Fixie, not really. The basket in the front is too small. It's just an Asda basket. I haven't moved on to full on Wold. What else? Brompton, no, obviously. Who's gonna transport compost on a Brompton? Hang on, I've got a shift. I need the smaller ring on the front. You know how the, the whole shifting mechanisms work. Makes it easier to go up the hills. Whatever bikes. Van Nicholas, no, because I'm gonna lock it up. I don't like locking that one up. Cannondale, <laughs> with fat off carbon rims on it, no. So, decided to go with the hybrid with the basket on the front, which is the Wild. The bothy bike, essentially. So I thought, right, is this gonna work? 35 liters of compost, how am I gonna do this? I thought about attaching a plank of wood to the rack on the back. I didn't have any time, so I thought, I know, I'll just stick a bit of plastic sticking up out the front basket just to stop it from falling off. And I'll just slump it over the handlebars. 
lo and behold, it worked a dream. The only problem was my uh, headlight bracket dug into the compost as I was transporting it home and it kind of leaked everywhere. But there we go, there's the incredible story of compost transportation. It's one less thing you need a car for. Just a leisure ride today. Just stopping leisurely. No one behind me? No, don't want to be in the way. I've stopped at this uh, large looking estate. They've got some variety of trees, I tell you. See if I can do my best. Hymns of cedar. That greeny, dark greeny big one on the left is a cedar. And then I think there's a horse chestnut, like a little one. It's got those leaves that look like horse chestnut. Hang on. Yeah, that that one where my glove is. And then there's a holly bush just there. That's good. In the background, you can hardly see it. Right at the top there. Looks like some kind of pine tree. I'm not so good at them. It's massive. I'm in the way now, I've got to move. Why drive a car that's like the same width as the road? Um, this could be a maple. It appears to be mapley to me. It's, um, they have like these yellow flowers, it seems, early in the season. And I'm just waiting for John Bootle to tell me what these birds are in the background. Oh, I can see it. It's a goldfinch, the one with the red face and the yellow bits on it. Black, white and red face. It's just at the top there, chatting. This has got to be the highlight of the video. Oh, soaking up the sun. Got the goldfinches chattering. John told me there was a skylark in the last one. That Nullarbor 300, what I did, accidentally picked up a skylark live on camera. That was around the sort of Rudge area on the way to Warminster before the original pile of dirt appeared. Anyway, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, I picked up this weird habit I've noticed. I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm going to come clean and be transparent. When I go out on my bike nowadays, I think it's because it's kind of, the weather's getting nicer and not sort of wearing so many layers of clothes and that. Anyway, I got a bunch of keys, right? I now start taking keys off of my bunch of keys because I don't want to take them all the way around on my bike rides with me. That's a little bit strange, isn't it? It feels a bit strange. Yeah, I haven't got that many keys on the old hook, but you know, I've got about four. So what I do is I take some off now. Anyone else do that? Is that a bit weird? Loads of green, loads of goldfinches still. Anyway, anyone else do that? Is that a bit weird? Feels like a summary kind of thing to do. But I'm gonna continue on. So there was that rain, rainstorm, rain shower in Chepstow when I crossed the bridge, and now completely dry, no wind, and the tiny bit of skin I've got on show on my legs is like feeling hot. So how things change. I'm on the way to Monmouth. I don't know if I'm going to go there or if I'm just going to turn back. All I've got is a bead on of energy drink and sesame snaps. And that's it. So I think I'll turn around and go home. Hope you've enjoyed this diversion. This is like wildlife heaven, this garden. I've seen a blue, a tiny little blue butterfly. It's like moth-sized. Oh, there's a bee.
Anyway, go check out in a bit. So I'm just trying to make up for that four minute monologue on flora and fauna. I'm gonna try and find a pile of dirt for you all, okay? It's been a while. One week. Um, haven't really seen many today. Saw a pile of sand earlier, but I don't know if that's gonna get much kudos from the viewers. So I'll try harder, see what we can come up with. There is a saying, what is it? Wales doesn't really often fail. Mother and baby. Mother dirt. Baby dirt. It's good, isn't it? That's, oh, I don't know what that is. It's very dark. That big one's very dark. Peat or maybe human matter. Mmm. There we go, there's your pile of dirt going. Can you see that hovering black bug? Someone told me what those were before. It doesn't rain, but it pours. Pile of dirt. Look at that, another one. Same composition. Apart from there's also some manure in the background too. Climbing. Oh dear. Oh, I've got hailstones now. Hailstones hit me in the face. Oh, what is Wales doing to me today? Oh, I, I escaped the rain most of it anyway. Bit of hail here, bit of rain there. Anyway, I'm off. Catch you in a bit. Wish me luck with me sunflowers. I'm gonna get me John Inns on it in a minute. Watch out for gout, see you later.